Video. Audio in three, two, one. You're live. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. God, Dr. D, yes, we've got a big, big announcement. And that's why, I don't know if I'm going to, for the YouTube watch uh, viewers, I'm going to show you a peek behind the curtain here. Hey, See all the balloons? Oh. They got all those balloons <laughs> for Lewis. <laughs> Lewis Jones. Has hey, been, guys. He's been on the show for many, many times, but he now has his own show within our show, a segment, and uh, he's going to take this great interview today. He's Big Lou Jones. Uh, he's also going to be spinning off to his own sports radio talk show uh, very, very soon. So let's get into, I want to introduce our guests here uh, and Lewis. Lewis, by the way, welcome to the Jeremiah Show officially. Oh, man, it's, 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 it's good to be here officially. Officially. You know, I, I always enjoy coming on unofficially as well. It's always good to hang out with you yeah. guys. Yeah, you, before, uh, yeah. Just like, you were just creeping into the set, and then we were like, who's again, this guy? He's so big, let's just let him talk. Still waiting for the sweet <laughs> potato pie, mister. Yeah, you know, from your mom. Du duly noted noted it, it's coming this Thanksgiving. it's coming this thanksgiving for sure okay we're gonna we're, we're gonna make sure that happens we'll br we should bring both the moms in on this thanksgiving uh, absolutely. We, uh, absolutely those will listen we do the thanksgiving show lewis and dr d and i every year for about six or seven years now all right let's get to a tgs radio proudly presents our new director of all things sports and he's our new sports host big lou jones He's Lewis Jones, of course. He's the CEO of Holy Fit 310 in Los Angeles. Uh, he's fitness to the stars. Lewis was born in Venice, California. He went to Venice High School, 1987-1990, and was a four-sport letterman, uh, letterman in football, track, baseball, and basketball. Is that four? Yeah. Lewis was awarded the LA City 3A Co-Player of the Year Award for football, and he also earned countless full athletic scholarship offers. He eventually accepted a full athletic scholarship to the University of Washington football team. Go and while at, yeah. And while at the University of, we got a lot of Washington listeners, so you, you're going to get a little, what's the rival team up there? Washington, Washington State. State. Yeah, they're on the other side of the team. They have apples. It's a whole other thing. I, for some <laughs> reason, I'm in the middle of all this uh, between my friends that are at that college and you, and they all want me to tell you whatever whatever the, the the rivalry thing is and i'm like just call him yourself here's this phone number i'm not gonna get in the middle of this <laughs> the rivalry there's definitely it's like ucla UC, U, uh, usc yeah right. yeah sure. okay so let's get back to your bio because i want everybody if they haven't uh, heard from you in a while since thanksgiving big lou uh, that while at the university of washington in 1990 to march 95 you started for two plus years as strong safety outside linebacker you won three pack 10 titles three rose bowl appearances and you won two of those and one undefeated season and national championship in 1991 lewis experiences his training and passion for sports and fitness have thrust him into the world of personal training and strength and conditioning uh so american ninja warriors if you need a trainer, we got one here for you. <laughs> oh, I like the plug. Let's put it out there. Lewis has been a personal trainer for over 20 years now. Um, I love this, though. You love helping kids. Um, you're you're, you're going to be at Snoop Dogg's uh, event coming up here in August, I believe, uh, val volunteering and helping out. Uh, you love helping kids, young athletes and adults achieve their fitness goals and exceed them. It's your goal and your passion and your passion in life. And you can find Fit Lou or Big Lou, or Lewis Jones, all, he goes by all those names, on Instagram and Facebook, at FitLou310. Um, you can call him, too, on his personal cell, 323-304-7339. Check out his fitness videos on YouTube. Holy Fit, we got Holy Fit Lou, Big Lou. Okay, so tell us, uh, I'm going to tell you about, a little bit about the show, and Lewis is going to help me out here. Uh, American Ninja Warrior where some of the most elite athletes in the country compete on the world's most difficult obstacle courses. It returns and is here now, season 13 on NBC. Lewis, tell us about the hosts. Uh, Matt Iceman, Akbar Gabijamila. That's a tough last name to pronounce. I hope I, got well, I gave right. that to you. <laughs> I see, I see, I see what you did there. I'm gonna volley it back to you, but I, I, hope, yeah. I, did you, I hope I did you right by saying that last name. Um, 
great great announcers you know in the in in course announcers to have while you guys are doing the show and you know they they're always really energetic when they're announcing as well such as the athletes that are running the course i mean they're you know at each break during the course you know the the contestants always turn back to the audience and give us a little bit of something to get involved in the cheer and root for them to go on as well my yeah. question to you two would be do you find, and we'll start with you, Abby, do you find that it's time sensitive, but we also want to get the crowd involved as well? Do, do you feel any extra added pressure when you're trying to get through the course, but you're trying to go ahead and acknowledge the crowd? Or now that we have you know family members watching on Zoom and all that stuff, we want to draw them in as well. Um, I don't think it's, it adds extra pressure. Um, when I go through the course, you know, my, my main focus is running the obstacle course and getting through each obstacle. So when I'm up on the obstacles, I, I'm not thinking about the crowd. I'm not thinking about what anyone's doing other than like my sole purpose on that obstacle. Sure. Um, once I complete the obstacle, like if I, if I felt like I did a really good job, I, I kind of like celebrate with the audience in a way. And if I had like a really near, like a really close fall or like, or something where I just barely made it, like, again, I, I, I just, I more of like celebrate my personal feelings with the crowd. So um, I don't necessarily add anything to celebrate with the crowd and I don't stop myself, but um, I just use my pure reactions from like, however I'm feeling on the course and just kind of like share it with them. Of course. Case Can I stop you guys? Okay. Can I stop you guys? Yeah. All right. Sorry, Lewis. Um, oh, no. I didn't get to fit to introduce them properly. I apologize. We jumped ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, we're I, gonna I, do, that's, that's, we're me, gonna do. that's me being eager to get into it. That's I all. know. I know. You can't hold you, but can I hold <laughs> any of you guys back? Just kind of like share it. <laughs> what them. we're going to do is uh, we're going to keep that question and that answer is great. And then Lou, you can, when we come back, you can go when Richard Cues, you ask Casey the same question. But let me back up just so I give you a proper intro. You deserve a proper intro. <laughs> so hold on. We're going to re-record that. So this is why we don't do it live because I mess up a lot. <laughs> okay. So we're going to drop that in. So after he talked about uh, hosts of the show and before he asked his first question and I'll drop. Yeah. I'll just finish up. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out exactly where. Okay. Here we go. In three, two, one, you're live. The new season of American Ninja Warriors will feature more than 400 competitors. And for the first time in American Ninja Warrior history, the age limit it, to compete is being lowered to 15 years old. Uh, your, your boys, Lewis, are almost at that age. Huh? You, can, you, can, you can put them in there. So, <laughs> Ninja Warrior. That, that would be exciting. Yeah. And then they're going to kick your ass. <laughs> Ninja Warrior, <laughs> <laughs> if they don't already, uh, is a sport. That has been rapidly grown across the country and kids of all ages are embracing it in record numbers like my niece who is 15. So uh, I know what you mean. Some of the um, today's most promising talent are younger competitors and now teenagers have the chance to compete alongside adult athletes. A top prize of $1 million will go to the winner if they can conquer all four stages at the national finals in Las Vegas. To get there, competitors will need to make it through qualifying rounds and semifinal, semifinals. Last season, 35 million people watched American Ninja Warrior. That was one of them. Lewis, I know, was one of them. Dr. I'm, D, how I'm about watching you? watching it now. Watching it behind. Yeah. Well, uh, the series is executive producer A. Smith & Co. I know him. A good guy. Worked on Hell's Kitchen and Kitchen Nightmares with him. Uh, Arthur Smith and Kent Weed, along with Brian Richardson, Anthony Storm, and Kristen stable okay so real abby clark she's 27 5 3 125 she is from gillette new jersey she's a director of preschool sports program in her off time when she's not hanging from something <laughs> by, her, <laughs> by her for dear life uh her boyfriend joe how do i say his last name Kappa bianco is that yeah. right oh yeah, good yeah, he supports her. So does dad, Joe, sister and brother-in-law, Devin and Sean Boyle. I love to give the family names out. His, her mom's name is Susan and her boyfriend's name is John Lambounty, uh, Barry and Bobby Campiano, Campiano. Campiano. 
<laughs> I did it right once. I can never you get it did. right twice. You got it right the first time. <laughs> I love the little, yeah, thanks. <laughs> this little bio blast about you. Um, this now veteran ninja, she returns for her fourth season and is paying it forward to the next generation and human and canine ninjas, which I'm sure Lewis will get into. And we're going to jump next to Casey Rothschild, age 22, 58, 140. Holliston, Massachusetts, business analyst. She is smart. I got to talk to you off, off air here. I need, I get, I need some <laughs> advice. Um, and her boyfriend, uh, she's supported by her boyfriend, Eli Chevalier. How'd I do there? Chevalier? Uh, Chevalier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was way off. Wow. Oh, and I could see you were being so polite. You didn't want to embarrass me. Thank you for that. Um, Bioblast. This history maker started Queer Ninjas Unite as a way to promote inclusion within the ninja community. I love that. I can't wait to hear about it. Okay, Lou, big Lou, I'm so sorry. Let's, uh, I've taken up a lot of your time. Let's welcome our American Ninja Warriors in the top five women competitors, Abby Clark and Casey Rothschild. Lou, take it away. It's all yours. No, no, it's all theirs. I'm just fortunate to be here to share this stage with them. So um, welcome again, guys. I'm truly excited to be here with you guys. I'm a huge fan of the show as well. Uh, it has nothing to do with me playing it in the background, I promise. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> it's always yeah. on. <laughs> it, it, you know, I keep it on. And, and, and going back to what Jeremiah touched on with my kids eventually getting into the show, I have two boys. I'm very fortunate to have two healthy boys, uh, five and turning seven uh, next week, actually. Aww. And they're both going on 22 and 25. So it's, that's a whole different issue. Um, but, you know, hopefully they will get into the show as well because they enjoy watching it a lot. Problem is I don't have the space in my home for them to practice some of the moves. So we end up in urgent care a lot, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> so Casey, uh, now Rothschild, there's, there's also another young lady by the name of Rothschild who is a um, uh, uh, CrossFit competitor. Are you guys related? Because I could see if oh. that is the case. I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. There's lots of Rothschilds. I always get asked the question whether I'm related to the bank family, whether I can give financial <laughs> I cannot that's what I was gonna ask <laughs> well, I guess we don't need to talk <laughs> offline <laughs> right so I mean so so going to you Casey the, the same thing that I had asked Abby like when you're you know we know the course is time sensitive and what I what I've noticed from watching this show is early on before we get to like the qualifiers and, and the semifinals and those things people are more more likely to take time between between the courses and and you know playing to the crowd plan to their family but as we get closer you know and people start dropping off and people are getting eliminated that time frame starts to cut down yeah. in between our, our 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 events our courses mm -hmm. what is it with you like do, do you find that that puts added pressure onto you when you're going through the courses and you know we all athletes and it doesn't matter what sport or what your craft is in terms of an athlete we feed off of the crowd the crowd feeds off of us but when we have time sensitive issues, does it add extra pressure to you when you're, when you're out there attacking the course? Um, well, I think the cool thing with the show is that it's always been this thing of if you hit a buzzer, you move on. So for me, at least when I'm on the show, I tend to try and try and move fast, but generally I'm moving at whatever pace I feel comfortable with. So ultimately I could get a buzzer. Um, but in terms of being aware of the audience and all of that, like I'm a performer, I, my background was circus, but for some reason it's never been something I think that crossed my mind on the show. I think I was just like the, with the lights and all that, I'm just focused on the obstacles themselves. Almost right. to the point, like with this run um, in Philly, I got up on top of the warped wall and I tried walking off. I forgot Matt and, I, Matt and Akbar were there for a second. <laughs> Because I couldn't hear them. I was so like tunnel vision looking at the warped wall. Someone had to go, oh, they're talking to you. Right, right, I, right. Oh, yeah, they're right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So then how is it, you know, with, with the tunnel vision, does it, does it take away from your focus or does it cause you to focus more intently? Or, you know, uh, like for myself, I, I guess I'll say it this way. If we're doing public speaking, right, it's much easier to speak at a venue, at least it's been brought to my attention this way. And this is how I personally feel. It's yeah. easier to speak at a big giant venue because everything is spread out. You can focus on that one little point way back on the wall and you're not really looking at everyone. Or 
-hmm. you know, in a smaller venue, everybody's right up on you. We're on that small stage. It's a little bit more pressure. Do you find being in this arena that mm -hmm. it, it makes it easier to not focus on everyone else and just stay locked in? Or can you like hear certain friends or family members in the audience cheering you on? Well, I, with, with a venue like this, especially with the size of the crowd, I couldn't hear any specifically. And I think that tunnel vision can be really good in competition yes. because if done correctly, you're blocking out all those factors that aren't helping you. So that fifth obstacle in Philadelphia, my bar had gotten really close to falling off that rung there. And yes. my coaches was yelling the whole time, move your bar, move your bar. And I, at the, in that moment, I knew he was saying something. I didn't know exactly what he was saying. And right. I was able to think if I stop to figure out what he's saying and move, I'm going to get off track. I'm going to adjust incorrectly. And I was, I was kind of in a flow of moving. I'm just going to keep going forward. And I was able to somehow like perfectly not slide at all to the side through all those rungs. And it wow. worked out. Whereas I've had competitions, whether it's on the show or a local comp, where I hear someone say something totally trying to help me, but then I'll stop my plan, change things up and it can throw me off. So it's about being able to, um, I guess, regulate what, what advice are we going to take and what are we going to block out? Cause people are going to say stuff no matter what. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now it, with, with your training and preparation, let me see. I, I forget. Like, I know you both have been on several shows. Um, Coming up to the very first time that either of you and either both of you were going into American Ninja Warrior. So for the first time you ever stepped out there, not having anything as a reference point in terms of how to really prep for it other than what we see on TV. Um, what was your training regimen like to get prepared for that? And I, I mean, I hear you saying coaches. So are you, do you have coaches that are a part of the show or you know, you found somebody else that's um, into like tricking and flipping or um, a parkour coach, or uh, does the does the show itself have someone that you to work with and train with you guys to kind of get you a little bit more acclimated to what you're about to endure? Um, as at, like as ninja athletes, we um, we don't have like like the show doesn't provide coaches or anything. We all sure. um, train on our own, and as the sport has kind of grown a little bit, um, you kind of start. We're starting to see more like ninja coaches. Yeah, um, yeah. but four seasons ago, when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing and I was just kind of going to the gym, playing on obstacles. Um, but I really wasn't learning like any technique. So at that point it was more of just like, see what happens kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. but now that like every season that I go through, um, I personally like go back and, and see what I liked in my training, what I didn't like. And then I kind of rework it from there, but I don't have like a specific coach. It's more of like my boyfriend and I that kind of train together. Awesome. You guys, you know what? We do need to take a quick break. So we're going to push pause right here. Everybody listening and watching, sit tight, stay where you are, grab a quick snack. We'll be right back with our American Ninja Warriors top five women, Abby and Casey. Stick in there with us. All right. You're clear. Um, can I have my mic? Real Here quick? is on. It's on. Hey, hey Lou. Headphones. Yo. Did you you asked the question in the opening, and then you went to Casey, and I cut you off. Did you want to ask her the same question? Yeah, we're gonna come back. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I didn't know if you wanted to ask that question, and, and um, because I cut you off, you forgot. No, no, it's okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> good work, guys. Sounds good. Okay. Are you guys ready for the next round of show? You guys ready to go? Yeah, well, we already filmed all of it. So, like, it's, it's all, all done. done. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Uh, I want to ask so bad. I was climbing gym, and some kid, I guess, had seen our episode of it, Abby, and he was like, oh, I saw you're on Ninja, and, like, oh, good luck the next round. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of good lucks after the after the first episode airs. <laughs> uh, and don't air mention, it, don't mention anything <laughs> here. By no, the, way, don't mention it, the, PR, the PR company, Ellen and everybody will get mad at me. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Careful, which is, you no. know this. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Yeah, no, no. I, I know. I know. I know. I can't know. <laughs> you can't know anything, really. <laughs> Sometimes it's well, not you know what you know, it's who you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Dr. Deal will catch it when he's ready. <laughs> All right. Here we go in three, two, one. You're live. We're live. And we're back. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> we're live and we're back. We're dead with air. Our top five American Ninja <laughs> Warrior stars, Casey Rothschild and Abby Clark. And um, you want to go ahead and pick up where we left off, Abby? Yeah. So just about like the training. Um, yes. Like I, I mainly train with my boyfriend, Joe and a couple other people, but we don't have like a, an actual ninja trainer or anything like that. We just, um, kind of go off of how we feel and what we did in one season and, um, kind of think about what we want to do for like the next upcoming season based on what our weaknesses were and what our strengths were. Um, but my, my first season that I competed on the show, I had only been, even like around ninja obstacles for about like six months at most. Wow. Um, so I really didn't have a whole ton of like actual ninja training. I was just um, playing around a little bit at open gym, but it definitely affected me because I didn't know any technique or anything. And when you don't have the technique, you end up wasting a lot of extra energy trying to figure out the technique while you're up there, or like you just don't make the obstacle basically. But um, like as each season goes on, it you learn more techniques and um, just better ways to train. But there are definitely some some people out there who have ninja coaches, and a lot of the kids now have ninja coaches, which are all a that, lot of older ninjas or ninja veterans. Um, so it's starting to kind of come full circle a little bit. That sounds that sounds funny to hear you say older ninjas. Like I yeah. don't. You know, yeah. Obviously, when you hear the term ninja, it puts me in the mind of martial arts, and you know, yeah. I've never, I've never seen an old ninja. Let's just put yeah. it that way, you yeah. know, per se. The so, ones that have been like, around. Five is an old ninja because we have these like eleven-year-olds coming up. Right. <laughs> like right. I feel great. Exactly. <laughs> like that's awesome. Like Casey, what about you? I mean, same for you. Like I mean, the first time that you, you know, came onto the show and came to attack the show, like obviously you know we're we're stepping outside of out of the, the traditional box in terms of you know strength training and conditioning and fitness uh yeah. because there's a lot of a lot of you know throwing yourself from one obstacle to the next and catching and you know it's it's a different type of fitness if you will when we're hanging with body weight you know with arms stretched above your head mm -hmm. and you know i've always said pull-ups is one of the hardest exercises mm -hmm. a person can do now we're asking people to jump off of a trampoline <laughs> fly across a pool, grab onto a ring that could still be a little damp from somebody else's moist hands because they're mm -hmm. nervous. <laughs> I mean, what did you do to prepare yourself for that? Well, before I had been doing Ninja for about, I think it was about six months, maybe six or seven months before I did the show the first time, but okay. I had been a trapeze artist for 10 years. Uh, so and that's not fair. That's not fair. No. <laughs> Very similar. And then I had done track and field for about seven years. I was a triple jumper and a pole vaulter. Um, Again, not fair. <laughs> and some climbing. So I had a background that I think you'll see a lot of track athletes or gymnasts, people like that, who end up involved in Ninja Warrior. So it helped a lot to kickstart that. I didn't have to learn how to do a pull up. I didn't really have to learn how to lache and things like salmon ladder came relatively naturally. But okay. like Abby was saying, there are techniques that are very specific to ninja that you have to get the hang of to make things more efficient. So even if I could do some of those obstacles now, I'm able to do it much more easily. Nice. Okay. You know what, guys, we do have to take another quick break. Um, but everyone out there, please keep listening. Keep watching. We're with the top five American Ninja Warrior women, Casey Rothschild and Abby Clark. We will be right back. Stick in around. Stick around. All right, you're clear. Stand by. This is I'm going to I want to say this before we come back live. Obviously, you heard I ran track as well and I was a triple jumper also. Oh, awesome. What was your triple jump? Oh, oh don't go there. So, <laughs> unofficially, you jumped over three cans, right? No, you know what? I didn't shave my toenails for this meet. <laughs> oh my god. I fouled by a toenail and I hit 51.2. Wow. I That's was, awesome. It was it was great, but it, it, there's no record of it because it again I, I scratched on it, um, and you know being a triple jumper in high school I was I was still about two oh five, so that's a that's a heavy triple jumper in high yeah. school, and yeah. I I indirectly gave myself a, a premature 
small version of scoliosis. So it kind of messed me up a little bit. All that, you know, hop, skip, jump, that's just a lot of force coming down. Yeah. So I, I messed my back up slightly. And then, you know, we corrected and fixed and everything was fine. I was able to keep playing football. They but, call the triple jumpers the walking wounded. That's what they're saying during the Olympics last 100%, time. 100%. 100 percent I you know I can feel I can feel it coming back every now and then you know because I work with a lot of kids I mentor a lot of kids I train a lot of kids I see them on the track yeah and I always want to get out there and just kind of go through the motion again and just relive doing that but it's it's too scary I, I can't afford to, to blow an ankle or tear a hamstring or both for that matter <laughs> <laughs> so. all right yeah. we're ready to go in three before hold on one second doctor I just want to get a word in there real um Abby and Casey I know you both care about particular things the you know um from the canine to the to the you know the ninja warrior um group that you have casey would please feel free to plug those and talk about those because it's important to get that in there and we can also put that in the commercial break um but just wanted to let you know that please plug what you what you matters to you as well during the show okay take it away in three two one you're live Perfect. Back. We're back, guys. We're back with Casey Rothschild and Abby Clark, American Ninja Warriors, top five women getting ready to go and finish competing in the qualifiers and get to the end. And one of them, if we're fortunate enough to have the champion on with us right now, how lucky am I to talk with them beforehand? That's so awesome. Um, so going back, Casey, with you, we were talking about preparation and training coming yeah. into the, to the show the first time that you ever did it. And this is a question I want to follow up with both of you guys. Casey, we'll start with you. After you've had that first year of competition and kind of getting obviously acclimated to the course and used to the lights and, and the crowd, was it much of a difference going into the second season when you did it? Or did you find it was still a little bit of like, you know, pre-course jitters? Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, I almost felt a little worse my second season on the show because oh. my first season I had no expectations I was very new to it um I don't know what your experience was Abby but I didn't do any be like there's they do kind of interviews for a lot of people there's no expectation of me I didn't get interviewed I had to do all that after my run so I didn't feel like anyone expect like if I did a lache then it was awesome and if I didn't no one really knew me so I was able to go in totally clean the next year I was having more of an expectation. Okay. Are you going to hit another buzzer? Are we going to hit a finals buzzer? So it's a little more difficult to keep focused where I was, okay, am I getting a buzzer or I'm not going to get a buzzer versus right. being able to feel just like happy with whatever you do. Right. And then right. as I've gone on, I think I've been able to get rid of those jitters a little more, but sure. yeah. Nice. <laughs> Abby, what yeah, about you? So so similar um, to you, Casey, I, my first season, I, I was so new to Ninja. I really didn't even like know anyone. So um, I just kind of went out there and whatever happened, happened. I was happy with it. And then even my second season going into it, I still didn't have the interviews or anything like that. I was still kind of like a no, like a nobody, but um, I just, I wasn't, I hadn't done anything spectacular. So I was kind of under the radar. And then once I hit my buzzer in Minneapolis for my second season that they did the interviews and everything after that. Right. So coming back for my third season was when I, um, I started to feel a little more pressure of like, I kind of, I need to hit a buzzer again because that's what people are expecting. Absolutely. But, um, but Did as you it, to hit that buzzer in that third season, like was that an yeah. expectation for yourself? Yeah, yeah. As soon as I did it once, like my mentality is like, if you do, if you can do it once, you can do it again. 100%. And um, and once I going into my third season, I was like, well, it's like hit a buzzer or nothing at this point, and it didn't happen. But um, and I was still really happy with with the season, and um, you know, just getting out there to compete is amazing. But I definitely felt more pressure once. I did well on the show just because there's so many more eyes on you and um, so many more people with expectations, but I always just keep it real with myself and make sure that I'm out there doing it for fun and I can have expectations for myself, but it um, yeah. doesn't matter if, you know, if, ever, if everyone wants me to hit a buzzer, if I don't, it's not, it's not the end of the world to me. I mean, right. I want to really bad, but um, of course you know, it, it so, happens and we're athletes. <laughs> well, you know, and that's, that's, you know, one of the great things about athletes 
in any in any format for that matter <clears throat> and is the the camaraderie that we all share i mean you know we obviously we want to go out and compete heavily against one another we can be friends before the competition and coming up to the competition but when the competition is going down i can't stand you <laughs> so what i want to talk with you ladies about when we come back from this next break is how are we cheering and rooting for one another when we're at the same show during the same taping um during the same competition are we really rooting for our friend or are we hoping that they you know just you know have a little slip but don't get hurt because you know <laughs> It'd be nice for me to be in front of you and we'll talk about that, you know, behind closed doors type thing. But I want to explore that with you two ladies when we come back after we take this break. We're with Abby Clark and Casey Rothschild, American Ninja Warriors top five women. And they're and they're hooked up, by the way, they're hooked up to uh, lie detectors, just so you know, listeners. Oh, perfect. Like on, like on, You're going to have like to on, tell the truth to your question. <laughs> it's like the beginning of Ghostbusters when they lie and they get shocked. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching for the hair. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We're out. We'll be back after this quick break, guys. Thank you. You're clear. Stand by. Big Lou, it's like you've done this a thousand times. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. If You're a good interviewer. It's not, my, it's, not, it's not my natural oily skin. I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 well, I'm, uh, Matt Frazier, the CrossFit guy during the documentary, he was talking about how uh, his sort of thoughts on competition. He's like, I want you all to do your best. I want everyone, you put it out there and then I'm going to beat you. And it was like the most like, like that's exactly what I was literally just about to say. <laughs> yeah. It's like in like a really pure way. You know, I, I, I love that so much. And that, that's the, the genuine... them come back, mm -hmm. come back uh, guys. You, right. you do this on air. This is great. Here we go. <laughs> three, two, yeah, yeah. three, two, one. You're live. Yes, you're looking at the screen. You see it, right? If you're just listening, you're hearing it just as well. It's hey. Abby Clark and Casey Rothschild, American Ninja Warriors, top five women here with us on the and Jeremiah Big Lou. Show and, and Big Lou. Sports Lounge. Big Lou, can I tease something real quick before you get back into this fascinating conversation? Yeah. Go to go to YouTube, too. Listen to that. I mean, it's great to listen to this on the radio or on podcast, but check it out. In the breaks, there are some great conversations that are happening <laughs> that you will not hear on the radio. So... Listen to this first on the radio, then on your podcast, and then go to YouTube. So watch it three times. Listen twice. Watch once. Back to Big Lou in the Sports Lounge. See, look, that's that's a that's a construction reference right there too. Cut twice or measure twice, cut once. <laughs> exactly. I haven't done much construction because I was going to cut twice and measure once. I got issues. <laughs> binge listen so, and binge watch. There you go. Um, so yeah, uh, Casey, you were saying. Um, Matt Frazier had had a great quote that he was talking about from the CrossFit Games. Can you drop that on us, please, so everyone can understand where yeah. I want to take this? Yeah, um, I don't know exactly how he said it, but something along the lines of that he wants everyone who's competing against him, he wants them to have their best day for them to put everything out there so that when he beats them, he knows that he's the champion that he really like, that you 100%. can feel that. So yeah, he wants to win. But no, and that's the same thing with Ninja. I don't want to win because Abby or someone just tripped. That doesn't feel good. You right. want everyone to put it out there and really. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I kid when I say that because, again, you know, it's, it's you guys against the course. Obviously, we're, we're going up and we're competing against other people. Yeah. The, the, there's two types of competitions going on in that it's you against your competitors, but then it's also you against the course. Mm -hmm. And. I'm, I'm, I mean, again, being an ex-athlete, I don't want to win because somebody got sick or they couldn't finish the competition. I want you to give me your A game. Whatever you have in the tank, leave it on the field, leave it on the court, because I don't want that excuse or that scapegoat later on. Well, Lewis, you won because I didn't, I didn't play hard. Mm -hmm. Why would you not play hard? We're in the middle of a competition here. So <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people per my experience. And I see it more with kids. And, you know, I mentor and I train a lot of kids as well. Um, and I notice a lot of kids have a tendency to do that when they are, they talk a great game, but internally and in their head, they're actually really afraid of the person that they're competing against. Mm -hmm. So if they go out and they don't try very hard and they lose, they can always say, well, I didn't try hard. Yeah. Have you ever found, or have you guys ever seen, and this, this is a question that either of you, either of you chime in. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed on the course like we become friends with some people and we see people going through the, through the, through the obstacles. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like maybe somebody just kind of lost it mentally I'm good. and they just kind of checked out? 
going through the course or have you, do you feel like you've gotten the best out of everyone that you've taken down in your journey of American Ninja Warrior up to this point? I think on, um, on the show, we, you know, you get that shot one, one time a year and there's so many people that want to be on that show. Um, when you do get the call to be on it and you compete, I think from what I've seen, everyone out there is putting in their hardest, their best effort. Um, I think the mental game is, is so important out on the Ninja course. Um, I don't, for me personally, like I don't always, it's not that someone's like giving up or they're, they're not doing it because they're scared or anything like that. I think um, like loss of focus and like other mental issues can become a problem. But I think for the people who are out there, they're, they're giving it their all knowing that they have one shot. This could be their only shot in their whole life. Um, and once you're, once you fall, you, you're done. There's no coming back from it. So from, from what I've seen people, when they're competing on the course, they're, they're giving it their all. And, um, but I think, I think like people lose focus and things like that, but I don't think it's, you know, I think they're a little different. Of course. Of course. Yeah, Casey? I'd say Abby's right. I think especially with the show, you don't see that as much, but it really, it depends what your goal is. So um, you see this maybe a little more with the men, but if my goal is to go super duper fast and something happens and I get hung up and I'm not able to do that, it can kind of get you out of your zone and you're a little less focused after that. Or maybe you have something weird happen, an obstacle, and you have to keep going. It can get you out of that mental space. But right, right. with Ninja, the way at least we do on the show, there are other local comps that are a little more points based but when you fall you're done so you don't get to have that well i fell and keep going you have to you go up into the point that you either you pump out or you trip or something happens so that, right. that's the cool thing generally people are putting it all out there mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's funny I, I like how you say you know we we just go hard and you know you make a mistake you make a mistake and you just keep moving yeah. and i remember when i was a freshman in college playing football and I was so hesitant to make a mistake because I wanted to be so good. And I went from being the man on the block, like going everywhere from high school and, you know, that's Lewis Jones and there he goes. And that's the guy that plays quarterback for this school and da da da. And I get to Washington, you know, and I have all these different accolades that I won in high school. I get to Washington and it's like number, number 36. I'm like, no, no, I'm Lewis Jones. Like you forgot. He's like, well, on here, you're number 36. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a reality check. Yeah. But, the, in that hesitation at that moment when I was younger in the game, you know, a coach pulled me to the side one day. He says, you know, Lewis, if you're going to make a mistake, make it full speed. You might make something positive happen. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great reference that when I watch people on American Ninja Warrior, you two, um, going across the, the crooked stairs or the dominoes, I mean, that's all about it. If you're going to make that mistake, you, you better make it full speed because yeah. that thing is going to tip and it's not, it's, it's, I want to say unforgiving, but there is water down there, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so for, for most people, they're going to be fine. You know, quiet is kept. I can't swim. So I don't care if it's three feet, I'm going to have issues. So <laughs> I really can't fall. I don't have a choice. Um, but I, you know, what I really want to do is I, I want you guys to talk about your charities for a little bit as well. I definitely want to get that out there and, and let everyone be aware uh, and know what you guys are doing, who you guys are working with, working for, and you know, how dear it, close it is to your hearts. So since, since we got you up right now, um, Abby, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your charities and what you're, who you're working with and, and how you came about that. Just in, in general, like what I- Yeah, what I, in general. Yeah, so I, um, I'm a preschool sports director. So basically it's a preschool ninja program. And uh, so again, it's- not fair, not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're starting them young. So, um, so I bring them in and I, you know, they do their little obstacle courses. We have like preschool bars that you would see in like a gymnastics gym. And they're just, you know, they're just building the super, super basic foundational skills and, and learning that it's fun to be active and it's fun to, you know, explore new things. So that's, and then I, once they turn five, they go into like our- our regular ninja warrior program at our ninja gym. Um, so it's wow. just like, we just transition them right into our ninja program. Um, so you're so, all ninja all the time. Yeah, yep. So I work at my my ninja gym full time and my boyfriend is actually in charge of the actual, the five and up ninja program. So between the two of us, we're like, 
we got all the ages. Do you have an old guys where Lewis and I could join an old guys? We've got an adult program. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are more than welcome. <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, we when we get past this this whole pandemic thing completely officially, I'm gonna ship my two boys out to you, and you can just oh, keep them for a, a summer camp. Please do. <laughs> and, um, just keep them. That, that'd be, yeah, just keep them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely, they can come anytime. <laughs> Bring them back as ninjas. And then, Casey, you're a yeah. business analyst. Yes, yes, uh, tech yes. company. Yeah, a, a tech company. Again, not very technical. I, I'm still I'm <laughs> the last member of MySpace, and I'm the last member of the, the members only code. Um, tell us about a little bit about what you do and and how actually I, I mean, Abby she's training all day long with kids doing ninja stuff but with you in a traditional uh setting in terms of corporate yeah. America how do you find time with you know tell us about what you do but then how do you find time to also be able to train efficiently and effectively so you can go out and compete on the level that you do to be where you are now in the show yeah so I have a remote tech job at this company called 40 grid um we manage field service workers so I'm able to do something totally outside of Ninja, marketing, sales, UX design with them. And since I work remote, it's really easy for me to get that training in during my day. Good. Um, but then outside of that work, I do some nonprofit work as well. Um, Queer Ninjas Unite is an organization that I started, I believe about exactly a year ago. Because okay. as an LGBT ninja, I realized that I and maybe one or two people I'd spoken to thought that we were the only ones in the community because right. there aren't many and there weren't many people, if any, on the show who were out. So I started this organization as a private Facebook group to bring people together and realize there was a need to educate the community at large. So I started Queer Ninjas Unite on Instagram, um, where I was able to put out educational content. Yes. And then through- it's a handle. Casey, what's the uh, handle? It's at Queer Ninjas Unite. Okay. Yep, just one word there. Um, but I'm also board president of a nonprofit, Neighborhood Ninjas. Um, so we're able to work with them. And since that's a 501c3, we were able to raise money to increase both um, financial access to Ninja Warrior and diversity. Oh, fun. So you say yeah. Neighborhood Ninjas. So like, are we now kind of in the backyard and through trees? Oh, no, no, it's just and lamps, you we know, are just... working towards that stuff. We're working towards some of those playground things, but that's that's in the works. But right now, what we do is we raise money for scholarships for kids to go to competitions they wouldn't otherwise be able to go to. We also have a mentorship program, much like Big Brother, Big Sister, yes. where we're able to pair up ninjas across the country. We have ninjas like Jesse Graff involved. Um, so it's been a really great way. We have some LGBT ninjas in that as well. But it's a great way to um, provide that support and show, I think there's a lot of things in Ninja that apply to life, that perseverance, that grit, setting goals and achieving them. So Absolutely. we're able to talk about, okay, what are we doing in Ninja and how does this apply to school? How does this apply to life? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, Abby, real quick, I don't want to forget, what, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about Canine Ninjas? Yeah, so... Um, I, let me, real quick, before you do answer, I want to say, like, I am a huge... <laughs> I'm a huge animal fan and it's probably because I'm part beast. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I really have not. a huge, I really have a huge heart for dogs. My last dog that I did have, she was a rescue. I adopted oh. when she was five months and I was fortunate to have her for 12, almost 13 wow. years. And then, you know, that moment came, unfortunately. Um, so tell us a little bit about canine ninjas and, you know, quite frankly, I want to put this out there. I signed Cesar Milan's dog training certificate. That's so I just want to put that out there. Not really, but I just, no. I'm as good as like, this is what I like to believe anyway. I want to say I'm as good as he is. But no, go ahead. Please tell us about Canine Ninjas. Yeah, so um, so I have a dog, uh, or Joe and I have a dog. His name is Ace. And is that who I saw running back and forth? Yeah, he's, he's over sleeping on the couch right now. Oh. <laughs> um, practicing, he's practicing yeah. his ninja moves. Mentally, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, Joe and I had both been ninjas, um, for about a year, I believe. And we knew we wanted a dog and we wanted a dog that could do obstacles also. So um, we got a border collie and he, we bring him to agility training. So agility is a dog sport. Um, and they, there's, it's a whole sport in itself. There's tons of dogs, tons of handlers, and basically they run obstacle courses. They're yeah, given yeah, a yeah. specific course 
um, over jumps and hoops and tunnels and like the weave poles where they have to weave through. That, I mean, that thing yeah. is amazing. I mean, it's that's so cool. It's, it's literally so cool. a whole sport in itself. Like Joe and I have learned so much. We go to a trainer with the dog every week. Um, and then we also train him at home as well. So there's a lot of training involved and, and a lot of connection required between the dog and the handler. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. He's, he's getting better. He just kind of, um, graduated from his first level of competing. So but he's, he's also nice ace. Good job. Ace. <laughs> yes. Uh, ace, by the way, is also a social media expert. He has his own Instagram. <laughs> See? See, what's that's, that? why, that's why I'm the last member on MySpace. Ace left me. That's what yeah, it was. you can follow <laughs> Ace on Instagram. What's that handle? Of, yeah, um, <laughs> Ace's Instagram is at Ace the Border Collie Ninja. Let's get him a so, let's, let's get him a more followers than we have. We don't have any. <laughs> Post his agility stuff, and um, but he loves. I mean, he his breed needs needs a job, and he goes crazy without it. So a lot of you see a lot of border collies in agility, but it's, it's, there's tons of dogs that are involved. So it's really, it's really fun. Casey, well, if I can, you guys, we're, we're getting close to that, that I want to say witching hour, but it's so bright out right now. So <laughs> we're just getting close to that hour. So if we can, I want to, I want to wrap with this and, and I'll start with Casey. If, if you had one piece of advice to give to, whether it's kids, adults, anybody that's looking to embark on this journey of, challenging themselves with American Ninja Warrior, what would it be? Um, I would say two things. One, if you're totally new to Ninja, that there's so many ways you can get involved. You don't need to be an athlete. I know we all talk about how we came from track or gymnastics, but you can just start with some balance obstacles. It's just going from walking on the floor to walking on a little block and you work your way from there. And the other thing I would say is for those who are competing already, work to make your goals about yourself. And that's something I've worked so much to do. You can't control what other people are doing on that course. But if my goal is to try and go my fastest, then I can't fail. That's, what advice? I mean, so well said, definitely. Yeah. Abby, same question to you. Yeah, I mean, my biggest piece of advice um, is real for, for me and what I've been working on with myself as well is, um, remember why you started and why, um, you enjoy the sport, you know, the sport, just like anything, any other sport, it can get really hard. It's not always depending on the level you're at, like, it's not always rainbows and sunshines, but you know, I'm in the sport because I love it. And, you know, sometimes competitions don't go as well as I'd planned, or sometimes they go amazing, but, um, I'm in the sport because I love it. And, you know, I, I was a gymnast my whole life. So it's a, it, it reminds me a lot of gymnastics and I'm just in it because I love it and everyone else should be in it because they like it. It's not something you should be forced to do. And, and just, you know, it's always good to come back and, and remember why you started, I think. Awesome. Well, you know, I want to say to both of you guys, Abby Clark, and Casey Rothschild, thank you so much for spending this time with me thank in the sports so. lounge with big Lou. It's been a pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the shows and how this whole thing is going to turn out. <laughs> I, I don't I don't do well when I sit eagerly waiting for my shows. I'm not going to drop how many shows that I'm trying to watch right now because that would be, well, kind of weird. But um, again, thank you guys so much. Again, everyone, thank you for listening and following us. This is Abby Clark and Casey Rothschild, American Ninja Warriors, top five women, killing it on the course. And if you hear somebody tippy-toeing through your house, it could be one of them. <laughs> thank you guys thank, thank you. you guys nice to talk to you guys thank you so uh be sure to check out american ninja warriors 89 central on nbc and go to instagram right now unless you are driving and uh follow abby clark she's at abby underscore clark 33 and you can find casey on her instagram <laughs> handle at casey Rothschild. that's spelled k excuse me c a s e y r o t h s c h i l d uh fit lou man we got big lou and the sports lounge great interview that was fascinating i want to thank both abby and casey uh and don't forget lewis jones he's been a personal trainer for 20 years he loves helping kids young athletes and adults like me 
He's helped me in the past. I've, I was not a very good student, though. Uh, they achieve their fitness goals and exceed them. His goal in life is to get you fit. That's his passion. You can find Fit Lou on Instagram and Facebook at FitLou310. His website, holyfit310.com. Give him a phone call, 323-304-7339. And you can find him on YouTube and at The Jeremiah Show. You can email him at biglou at thejeremiahshow.com. Once again, thanks to Abby and Casey and uh, American Ninja Warrior. Good luck on that. We can't wait to see what happens Thank next you. week. Next week, we've got our great, a great musician, a legendary musician, Ron Sexsmith. And we also have NBC's The Voice winner, season 20, Cam Anthony. Listen more and evolve. Have a great week, everybody.